wanted to start with something different. I, I've talked about this since the pandemic started. It's actually very simple for me. We should be, or we should have, shut the economy down mostly, except for the so-called essential workers, um, for a week or two. Figured out who the most vulnerable were when it comes to the pandemic, COVID-19, the Wuhan novel coronavirus, whatever we're calling it today, and then started it back up almost immediately. And I think if Trump had the, the, the ability to go back and do it again, he might have done this. Start the economy back up for those of us who are not at risk. There are people who are at a high risk who are elderly, who have pre-existing conditions, and specific pre-existing conditions seem to be even more susceptible, like heart disease and diabetes and things like this. Protect them. Okay, you can't partake in the economy. We want you to get even more than social distancing. Let's wear a mask. Let's have, let's have you in a place where we can, we can keep you safe and secure. Not like send in COVID patients like they did in Michigan and New York into the nursing homes where people were mo- most vulnerable. No, we should not have done that. But shut the economy down for a little while. And as you shut it down, if you have to help people out with some unemployment for a couple of weeks, whatever. Let's say it even goes a month. But we've been doing it now for a year and a half. And I've been saying this for a while, so much so that there was a guy like in Louisiana or something called in and said, who are you to tell me I have to go back to work and unemployment doesn't pay you what I used to pay and all this other garbage. And I'm like, no, no, no. There are a lot of people who, when they worked, were making X amount of dollars and are getting paid more than they were making on the job to stay home. And I said, there are millions of people who were in that situation. And of course, people argued with me and bop it up. At the end of the day, I was right, verifiably right. And people still are not going back to work because especially in liberal progressive states, they're still matching like the federal funds. In other states, they're turning the funds down and saying, look, go your ass back to work. What are you doing? Go to work. The federal government doesn't want people to go back to work. Liberal states don't want people to go back to work because then the people have to rely on them for all of their needs. So, Carrie, you actually sent me a story that highlights exactly what I've been talking about for months now. And if you don't mind, you fill us in and then I'll continue after. Go ahead. From the blaze, adding weight to the theory that extended virus-related unemployment benefits have directly contributed to a labor shortage. A survey published this week found almost 2 million workers turned down job offers during the pandemic in favor of collecting unemployment. The Morning Consult reported Wednesday an estimated 1.8 million Americans rejected job offers over the past year due specifically to the generosity of federal and state unemployment benefits, which ranged from $300 to $900 a week over the course of the pandemic. The results were based on a survey conducted June 22nd through the 25th of a representative sample of 5,000 U.S. adults who are actively collecting unemployment. Of the 5,000 respondents surveyed, just under a third of them reported turning down a job offer during the pandemic, then responding to a follow-up question. 45% of those who turned down a job offer said they did so due to the generosity of the unemployment benefits. An all-morning consult extrapolated that of the 14.1 million Americans who received unemployment the week ending June 19th, 13% or 1.8 million turned down jobs in favor of unemployment. Others cited child care obligations, health limitations, and the pandemic generally as reasons for turning down jobs. Following less than stellar jobs reports in April and May, 26 states decided to cut their statewide unemployment benefits early, hoping to incentivize Americans to return to the workforce. But President Joe Biden may argue the benefits were not the reason for the labor shortage, insisting that anyone collecting unemployment insurance was liable to lose their benefits should they turn down a job that evidently was not entirely true. Emergency federal unemployment benefits offered and later extended under coronavirus relief packages are officially set to expire in September. But economists with Morning Consult warned the policy's termination doesn't necessarily mean millions of people will automatically re-enter the labor market. Of course it means that. They won't have any income coming in. Carrie, thank you. Of course it means they're going to go back and go to work. But only if the jobs are there. People have stayed off the job for so long, a lot of small businesses simply can't reopen. A lot of small businesses simply went by the wayside. A lot of small businesses just couldn't sustain on what it was the government was offering. The government was not offering businesses enough money to stay up and running without any employees. But they were offering the employees enough money to not go back to work. Why? Because as I said before, they wanted the power and control to handle the purse strings for individual households. The money you get is going to be from me. The food you get is going to be from me. The transportation you get will be from me. The housing you get from me, the the heating or the AC, will be from me. And if you're reliant on me, you must keep voting me in. I'm the king. I'm your savior. I'm your religion. I'm your higher power. This is what the government in this country wants to be if we're leaning towards socialism and communism. 
Enough is enough. Go your ass back to work. Now, you want to call in and argue with me about it? Let's argue about it. You want to call in and say you agree? Then call in and say you agree. The jobs were available, but we kept on extending these unemployment benefits. When, when we were allowed to go back to work, we kept on extending it. Listen, I'm a worker bee. That's who I am. I work my ass off. I have my entire life. Started working at 12 years old cleaning out fish tanks. I've always wanted to work. I've always wanted to make my own money. I've always wanted to be productive. I've always wanted to be somebody who could say, I could buy my own ticket to the to the movie theater. I can, I can buy you know my own car, my first cars and whatever. At the end of the day, you either have that in you or you don't. I think all of us, generally speaking, have it, but it can be disincentivized by an overlording government. So if the government came to me and said, we'll give you exactly what you're making now, to stay at home and not work. Just don't work anymore. My answer would be, I'm not doing that. I'm going to work. I'm a worker. It's what I do. It's just simply what I do. And I I think there are a lot of people like me, but there are even more people, I guess, who don't feel that way because they're being offered the same amount, if not a little more, to stay home, and they are. They're staying home. Look, you can reject unemployment any day of the week you want and go back to work. Many employers have contacted me, Joe, they won't come back to work. And if these businesses go away, forever you'll be reliant on the central government. It shouldn't be that way. Unemployment should be a bridge. Okay, we crossed the bridge a while ago. Any benefit from the government should be a bridge if you're eventually able to work. It's kind of simple. 